Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Alex and today we're going to talk about the e-highway, which is a project that's currently underway in Germany, especially on the German Autobahn. Now it's a project that involves electrifying a stretch of road on the German Autobahn, which is, if you didn't know, just another term for highway pretty much. In Germany they're just called Autobahns. That's, that's all we have. We don't have highways. It's, it's Autobahn. Um, and today we're going to take a look at this. Now, last weekend I've had the opportunity to drive past it on my way to Ratzeburg, which is a lake uh, kind of an hour away from Hamburg where I currently live. And it was super interesting seeing this in person for the first time. Well, let's take a look at where this is so you get an overall perspective. So this is the northern part of Germany. And um, this is the Autobahn that leads up to, the, um, to Lübeck, it's a city in kind of northern Germany here and right and there's Ratzeburg that's where I went and uh, right on this stretch here uh, which is close to Hamburg, 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 Hamburg that's what we call in Germany um, on this str stretch between this kind of um, uh, crossing like this uh, what do you call it like an exit like where you can exit the highway and enter it <laughs> whatever you know what I mean like an intersection whatever and and this uh, Kreuz we call it uh, intersection here um, that's where they are building this uh, highway, uh, this electric highway, I could call it uh, e-highway. And you can see that on these uh, images from Google Earth, uh, Maps Earth, whatever, they are still uh, kind of outdated, so they're not under construction or they're not constructing anything in these images right here. Um, and it's a three-lane highway, and you can see this in some of the shots that I did. Now. Uh, I'm doing this video in English because I figure that a lot of the people from Germany kind of know about this, maybe heard about this, and you know, maybe even drove past it and wondered, you know, well, what's what's all this about? Um, but I'm hoping that this is still proving a valuable resource for some of you who just want to get to know what this is all about. Now, this will be a brief look at this, not super in depth, but uh, you know, when I say not super in depth, then it might be more in depth than some of you like. So <laughs> um, deal with it. So let's go to electdrive.com. They have an article that's in English, which I think is super helpful for all of you listening international and watching internationally. And this article features on a high level the most important parts that um, you know the project encompasses. However, what I find most interesting from this uh, article is the picture. Now let me zoom in on this. And this is how it looks like. So you can see these trucks, which are, you know, at these, looks like the electrification that they're, they, they're using for trains, which have the two uh, like takers for energy. I don't know the exact term, sorry. <laughs> um, but they're both touching two suspended cables, which are providing the energy, so that will be the positive and the negative end. When I was driving past it, I had my friend in the car with me and we're kind of speculating, and I was actually speculating, like those are just for redundancy. So they had one big, taker for the energy and um, it would, you know, kind of uh, go across this and just make sure that, uh, let me zoom in on this so you can see, uh, it doesn't really zoom in that much, but you can really, you know, have this as redundancy, but no, turns out those are negative and positive, which does definitely make sense, but I was wondering, what happens if you swerve, like, it, will it short, like, it, I don't know, it seems that the area where it's supposed to touch in relativity to the the car itself, like the truck itself, is not that high. And, you know, especially if you're overtaking, obviously, there's only the rightmost lane uh, equipped with this. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's interesting. Um, so let's stay on the topic of the trucks themselves really quick. You might see them as being pretty quirky if you're from the US. Your trucks do look different, uh, definitely look different. Um, so this is how trucks look like in Germany, usually. This is what they use for long haul distance and the big transport they're doing. And um, right under the kind of roof element that's in the front, that's usually adjustable just for aerodynamics purposes, they apparently have this aperture that can extend upwards and then touch the two wires to have the positive and negative contacts to drive these trucks. Now, in the article, it stated that these trucks are hybrid trucks rather than full electric trucks, but this is a pilot. So, you know, they're expecting to maybe experience some, some, some issues with this or maybe not. And 
um, they will learn from this and maybe extend it towards full electric trucks that can charge up a little bit uh, during this trip. Now you might say, Alex, this is this is all fine. Uh, it looks looks kind of futuristic. I think it looks pretty cool, but is this really worth it? And this is what we're going to look into really briefly today, um, because in my opinion, a high level opinion. No, I'm always for having new energy stuff do, done and everything that takes pollution off our roads is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But with all the companies that are currently on the market producing electric vehicles and some of them starting to produce electric trucks, we've seen the Tesla Semi, although it's not in final production yet, but we've seen it on the roads. There's some other companies as well. I'm not quite sure of the investment is really worth it of building all the poles and all the infrastructure for this to uphold this. And it's only a short stretch of road. Now, in Germany, uh, trucks are only allowed to go 80 kilometers an hour, which is 49 miles an hour, like 50 miles an hour, let's call it 50. Some of them do go a little bit over. So this is the maximum speed they're bound to by law. Like this is, they're, they can't just, they're not allowed to go faster. Um, and the e-highway, is designed, as we'll see in a later article here, uh, to take uh, to, to work up to 100 kilometers an hour. So from that perspective, you don't have to drive slow. That was the first question I think we all like. We're all wondering: Do I have to drive super slow? Now, how long is this stretch of road? In the article, it stated that it's a five kilometer stretch. So it's five kilometer, five kilometers on the one way and five kilometers on the other way. In case you're wondering how much that is nice in the metric system, five kilometers an hour is also just the kilometer to mile conversion, and that is 3.1 miles. Now that is not a lot. And we'll look into how much energy we can transfer in that small amount of time in a little bit. So out of this article, um, my takeaway uh, was, you know, renewable energy sources, definitely cool. They have a lot of, this is in, in the uh, state of Schleswig-Holstein in Germany. So we do have states in Germany. A um, little fewer states than there are in the U.S., but still, and they have a lot of renewable energies there, especially, uh, especially from wind. So they're planning to do this in. Uh, so this will be actually live in mid 2019, so mid this year, in a couple of months, and they're planning on you know charging up and operating the vehicles while they're connected to the system, all on renewable energies, which is cool. And then you were wondering, are there really any trucks? that can you know, use this system. And yes, there are a couple that come from Volkswagen Scania brand. They are building, yes, you might have guessed it, the trucks. All right, so this is the main takeaway from here. Um, you know, Read through the article if you uh, want to. I'll post all the links down below in the video description. Now this is now a German article and we're not going to you know, make this a lesson in German literature or you know, just the language of German in general. Um, we're just going to look at this really quick. It says beginning in May, so this is a uh, second source that kind of confirms mid-2019 of this being, you know, on the road, kind of in operation, I should say. It's, all, it's already on the road. It's above the road. Um, and it says five hybrid trucks will participate in this test. So it says that um, there's a couple of, you know, parties involved in this. But five hybrid uh, LK LKVs, this is how we call them, uh, uh, Lastkraftwagen. <laughs> um, so five hybrid trucks um, with uh, that are that are kind of belonging to one of the um, operators that are doing a lot of uh, drives between Hamburg and Lübeck, this uh, the port of Lübeck. Um, those will uh, operate. These will operate these five trucks on the stretch of road. Um, so during their during this like on the sorry sorry for my rambling on the stretch of road, they'll drive purely electric, and after this they will re ignite I should say uh, their diesel engines. So they are not fully electric trucks, which you know bummer um, to me at least, but still cool I guess. So this is the main takeaway from this article, and now let's go on to the page like the real page that's like the, the main page, um, not any news articles. Um, you can switch to English over here, which is kind of cool. And they change it out a little bit and you know, have some different text here. So uh, if you want to feel free to read it in English, I will um, read it in German uh, so that we have kind of the original language on this. And then I'll just translate as needed. 
Now that just states some background facts here that, you know, the transport sector is emitting a lot of those CO2 um, gases and that's not good and we, we all know about this, right? I'm not going to go into why CO2 is bad. Um, but they now have all the details on this page and we already talked about the length. So this is two times five kilometers uh, on each stretch of road, like in each direction, obviously. And um, that's kind of the idea behind this. Let's go into the technique because like the, the technical details are what I'm at least super, super interested in. And this is where we can kind of decide if, if this is really worth it. Um, so this is how it will look like. We saw some live images, obviously me driving past and from the other images. So they will operate this on 670 volt DC. So that's not alternating current, um, uh, as you might you know, expect from uh, different systems. I'm pretty sure the trains, like the electric trains, the big ones, like the IC in Germany, the Intercity Express that goes super fast, they're using AC. Um, pretty much maybe 15,000 volts or something. So this is kind of low voltage, low voltage at 670 volts. And it is um, designed to take up to four trucks at the same time. Now, and this is where stuff gets really interesting. Let's take out our calculator here really quick. 670 volts, so 670 times how many amps do we get from this? Not sure, let's say let's say a total of maybe 800 amps. So 200 if all four trucks are connected at the same time. So times two, oops, <laughs> don't want to do that, times 200. Mm, and we're at 134,000. So it's 134 kilowatts. Now, let's assume a truck hits it dead on 80 kilometers an hour, um, which is uh, the speed that they're allowed to go at. And it's a five kilometer stretch. So, you know, divide 80 by five and you get 16. So it's 1 16th of an hour they will spend during that, um, on that trip. You know, if you've ever been bad at math, just write it down, I guess. And if not, just, you, you, you're, you're able to follow me. Just trust me on this. Um, so it's 1 16th of an hour. So if we divide this number by 16, we should get the amount of kilowatt hours that we can put into the battery um, during our five kilometer stretch, driving at 80 kilometers an hour, assuming that the system is able to handle 800 amps and then divided by four, because we can have four trucks on this simultaneously, which will lead us to 8.375 kilowatt hours. And that's assuming that the truck can really take all this 134 kilowatts, uh, which I guess they should, but still, so this is not a whole lot. Remember, you have to drive the car. So for now, it's just the hybrids. So they definitely have to be driven on that stretch of road. And then they said in a section down on their website that they might ex extend this to charge the battery. But how much is really going to be left after you drive this stretch, the five kilometers, given that's, that's not a whole lot of driving, but you know these trucks are heavy. Um, and how much is really left of this? So. Let's compare this really quick to a Tesla. Let's do a Model 3 um, because this is kind of easy to go with. If a Model 3 would be able to charge at the 134 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts um, that are on the system, assuming our calculation here, 8.375 um, kilowatt hours would get you roughly, or playing, let's say playing it safe, it would get you pretty much 50 kilometers, which would be 31 miles. So that means uh, every 31 miles, you would need a 3.1 mile stretch of road. So it's basically 10% of your road will be covered with these. And then you can drive between the kind of uh, equipped parts of the e-highway and the non-equipped. But that's with a regular car. Now, this is all setting up for, uh, this is all being set up for trucks. So we can't really expect the same things. Um, and this is, I think, one of the big shortcomings, right? If you think about electric cars in general, and their benefits and electric trucks also in general. Um, if you go for electricity in general, I'm saying a lot of in general here, sorry. Um, you might say, or you, you might just go about this, setting up charging stations, which are able to you know, charge trucks as well as cars. And then there's no need to invest heavily. And this is a, you know, they're investing millions in this to get this to work. 
into this infrastructure which might get damaged where they have to you know build everything up new while on existing uh, kind of rests uh, rest stations during on your autobahn you have electricity already there and you are able to uh, build your charging stations there so you know fr from my perspective it's just a whole lot of overhead costs that are being undertaken just to, to get this to work is it something that we could see more of in the future sure but I'm I'm more on the route of invest heavily in the development of better batteries and then let's have our trucks be fully electric and I'm super like like seriously super excited to see how far Tesla's trucks can really go. Now is there anything else that's uh, kind of interesting here they they're talking about a lot about the poles that are actually there to hold this up and the um, chains which are used to hold the tension in the cables and all of that. Um, they're up in 12, uh, they're up 12 meters high and then 8 meters is the kind of um, uh, the, uh, God, what is that, the, the perpendicular uh, support rod here that holds everything else up. So, you know, a bunch of stuff that we're not super interested about. Um, what I would say uh, is, is uh, again, kind of interesting is the facts question section. So the frequently asked questions, facts. <laughs> Um, and uh, it you know says how fast can they drive on here it's the 100 kilometers an hour uh, but since they're limited to 80 by law so it's, it's going to be 80 here they state that um, it's not quite you know it's not quite sure how many uh, trucks can be on there at the same time uh, because there's a bunch of factors that go into this how much is available from the uh, grid right now and you know a bunch of other stuff uh, however, they said currently a minimum of four are planned um, and have a bunch of other little details in here. Talk about safety a lot and um, which techniques, like which uh, propulsion techniques of trucks are supported by the system. And it's not a whole lot. Like, I mean, technically, yes, but currently it's basically for these five trucks, they're building this and it's supposed to run for... Uh, two and a half years and then there's supposed to be a second part of this but you know it, it's it's a lot of work being done for a marginal benefit I, at least that's my personal view on this um, and um, yeah I mean that that's basically it let's let's leave it at that currently if you're interested in this check out their page uh, check out the articles that uh, I'll you know I'll link down below um, let's summarize real quick. So this system will be able to enable uh, trucks that are outfitted with this special kind of systems to charge and be propelled, like be propelled forward. So the electric car can be run on this uh, energy while they're connected to the system. Connection will be done via two of the kind of energy takers going up and touching the two the negative and the positive uh, parts um, cables that are suspended from these poles there. It's only 3.1 mile stretch, so five kilometers. And with our current estimate on how much they can charge on this, um, it doesn't seem like a whole lot or how much not they can charge, but you know how much they can just in terms of energy they can get from this. So I'm excited to see how this will really turn out. We should get the first results beginning May when they will open up the Autobahn again to have all three lanes unrestricted because currently you saw that barrier in the video. Um, it's still not all, you know, kind of, it's not all done yet and they're still in the construction phase. And I will hopefully give you all an update about this. All right, I've talked for way too long again. Uh, let's, let's leave it at that. Hope you had fun in here in this video. I hope you learned something new. Um, let me know down in the comment section below, what do you think? Is this something that's, that's future-proof that should be developed more heavily or is this something that's kind of uh, a intermediate step that some people can say they've done something great but we'll just move to battery electric trucks uh, in the future anyway and we'll have the high-speed charging stations uh, when truckers have to take their, uh, by law, uh, their rest break anyway and they can just charge during that stop let me know in the comments and other than that please subscribe if you haven't done so yet so you can see all the new videos I'm hopefully picking up the Tesla Model 3 in Hamburg on Wednesday that will be in two days from now and um, yeah 
Remember, have fun, and I'll see you in the next video.